Ya waleta matam sanga. Yabo! Now the class today, my brother, my sister, is going to last only eight minutes and will be done. Watch me. Hey! Today we're talking about a man whose photograph you see right here in class. Show my hands those who cannot see it. All right, good. So this is the photograph of Andre Standler. How many of you have watched the American movie Standler? Standler. If you haven't seen it, we'll bring it to the class one of these days and show it to you. It's all about this man here. Andre Standler. My God have mercy. If you are ready, my brother, my sister, we will tell you a very arrogant story about this guy here. My God, if you are ready, let me see your answer. Hear me now. Yabo! Oga Kitchen Power. I see you. Thank you so much, Oga Chicken pa Kitchen Power. Thank you so much for joining us, Abdul Ghani. I see you too. Oh, William Cecil. I see you too. Thank you so much for joining us, Solomon Nimakon. Hey, I thank you, Razak of Ghana. Thank you so much for joining us, Selassie. Oh, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate all you wonderful people. This is the class. Are you ready? Yabo. Okay. Yabo. Now, uh, the man we're talking about today, okay, so this is the movie. It's called Standler, my brother, my sister. Mm -mm -mm -mm. We are going to tell you a very interesting story about uh, this man here. My brother, my sister, his name is Andre Standler. Andre Standra. Andre Standler. And Andre is spelled A-N-D-R. Uh, e and the E has uh, an uh, accent on it uh, as in a Sandy Goo. And then we also have um, a standard S T A N D E R. And you saw the um, movie. We're going to find time and watch it. But let us look at the man, Andre Standard. He was born Andre Charles Standard on the 22nd of November in 1946. In fact, 22nd day of November in 1946. In fact, he was a South African policeman and a criminal. Hey. Criminal South African police. His father, my brother, my sister, was a renowned man in the history of South Africa. He was the son of a prominent figure in the South African prison service, whose name was Major General Francois Jacobus Standard. He himself was born in 1916. 30 years later, he had a son called Andre Standard. My brother, my sister, he died in 2001. Andre was born on the 22nd of November in 1946. In fact, at a very early age, he showed signs and symptoms of criminality. Andre, our subject for today, was under pressure from an early age to pursue a career in law enforcement. His father wanted him to be a law enforcer, a policeman, or a prison officer like him. So he took him to the police school, the South African Police Training College near Pretoria in 1963. That was when he went to the place at the age of 17. My brother, my sister, he graduated at the top of his class. Number one student in policing. Shortly afterwards, he joined the Captain Park Criminal Investigation Department. And that was when his criminal activity started. My brother, my sister, in 1977, Standard flew to Durban and robbed his first bank. He was a specialist in robbing banks. He robbed his very first bank in 1977. And between 1977 and 1980, two and a half years, he was believed to have stolen nearly 100,000 rand after robbing nearly 30 banks in South Africa. Standard was arrested and sentenced to 75 years in prison on the 6th of May, 1980. 
please listen to this attentively. The son of a prison officer who pushed him into the police service. He graduated and became a policeman. Posted to the Kempton Park Criminal Investigation Department. Within a period of two and a half years, he had robbed a total of 30 banks. Right there in South Africa, he was a born criminal. My brother, my sister, after robbing the banks, he was arrested in 1980 and sentenced to 75 years in prison. And when his father had it, he cried like a little baby. Hear me now. He went to prison on the 6th of May, 1980. However, since many of the charges in the sentence ran concurrently, he faced an actual sentence of just 17 years. Standard met Alan Hale and Lee McCall at the Zonderwater Maximum Security Prison where he served. And when he met them, his life took another turn. Listen to this. Now, at his very first trial, Stander claimed that his disillusionment with police service stemmed from a prior incident when he and his fellow officers shot and killed 176 unarmed children during the 1976 Soweto uprising. However, Stander was not present with the police contingent at Tembisa when the shooting of unarmed school children took place. Remember, we spoke to you about the Soweto uprising, which happened in 1976. According to Stander, he was part of those who joined hands to shoot and kill innocent black children, 176 of them in number, in 1976. My brother, my sister, he just wanted to join the police so he could kill and rob just like the thief in the Bible. Just coming to thief and to rob and to murder. My brother, my sister. Other accounts have suggested that Standard, who completed his national service in Angola during the South African border war, may have also been bored with civilian life and craved the excitement afforded by a life of crime. He went to Angola. Saw all the atrocities there. He saw all the wickedness in Angola. My brother, my sister, he was a man who loved to kill and to steal. Listen to the interesting thing now. I got news for you. On the 11th of August in 1983, whilst in prison, Standa and McCall, one of the friends he found in prison, along with five other inmates, were taken from the prison's premises to a physiotherapy appointment. And you know what it means to say physiotherapy? Some kind of exercises to deal with the bones and to deal with the muscles and so on and so forth. My brother, it's a way of treatment. Mm -mm -mm. My brother, my sister, once the prisoners were left alone with the physiotherapist, Standa and McCall overpowered her and escaped. The other prisoners refused to participate and stayed behind. But McCall, yes, and Standa decided to escape after just seven half his term in prison. Standa and McCall returned to Zonderwater on the 31st of October, 1983, in order to spring Alan Hale from the facility where he was taking a trade test. They wanted to get him to also escape the third person. And from that day until the end of January, 1984, the, 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 the uh, man we're talking about today, Zonda and two of his friends who escaped, began robbing banks together. They robbed and they robbed. And their gang was called the Standard Gang, a term coined by the news media. A call was killed on the 30th of January, 1984. What happened? How was he killed? My brother, my sister, look at what happened. 
Hail, who was the person they rescued from prison and helped him to escape, he fled to Greece, then to England, then to Spain, and eventually back to England, where he was arrested, tried, and sentenced to nine years in prison for robbery and a related firearms charge. After serving his time in the UK, he was extradited back to South Africa, where he was sentenced to a further 33 years in prison. Hale was released on parole on the 18th of May 2005 after spending over 20 years in prison. While police were closing in on McCall in South Africa, Standa had been in Fort Lauderdale in Florida trying to arrange for the sale of the gang's recently purchased sailing yacht, the Lily Rose, that they planned to use for their final getaway once he had acquired enough money. Listen to this. Yabo. Yabo. So Andre Standa, my brother, my sister, look at what he did. Andre Standa, look at what he did. He was able to escape to the United States of America. And when he got there, he decided to change his identity. He decided to call himself an Australian. Australian. And he was able to fake an identity as an Australian writer, an author. And because he looked Australian, he passed. One day, he went to buy a car in a garage. And when he bought the car, and this happened on the 10th of February 1984, after he had escaped. He bought the car. When he bought the car, he decided to drive it out. Unfortunately, police stopped him and asked for his driving license. He realized that it was fake. They arrested him and took him to the office. But he was able to talk himself out as to how he did it. The police wondered after all. They granted him bail, and he left. After he left, in the night, he returned to the same police station, broke into his own car that had been impounded, stole it, and drove it out. The following day, he took it to the same garage where he bought it from and asked them to repaint it. In Ghana, we say respray. To paint it in a different color. Unfortunately, the garage owner, my brother, my sister, by name Anthony Tomasello, had read in the news that this man had been arrested and he was a criminal. He spoke with his lawyer and the lawyer asked him to call the police. The police came in, surrounded Andre Stander's house, but he had bought a bicycle for himself, which he used to escape. Later in the night when he was returning to his house, one policeman was still on duty standing by. He tried to stop him, but he tried to escape. He started to struggle. Andre was reaching out for the gun of the policeman when it evacuated. In other words, it fired straight into him. He fell unconscious. Policeman started to give him first aid. Unfortunately for him, he bled to death before the ambulance could arrive. That was how he died on the 13th of February, 1984. Three days after the stolen car issue. My brother, my sister, today we have the opportunity to talk about a dangerous criminal. A criminal who helped to kill 176 black children in Soweto. A criminal who robbed at least 30 banks in South Africa. A criminal whose father was a prison officer renowned in the history of South Africa. He ended up being shot and killed in America. He is the subject of the film called Standard. My brother, my sister, after his surname, it's an American movie. Find time and watch it one of these days. In the interim, 
Today, we have the honor to talk about one of the most dangerous people South Africa ever produced. Though a police officer, he was nothing but a dangerous criminal. Today, we remember you. Today, you are in hell as we speak. Andre Standa. Andre Standa. Andre Standa. Andre Standa. Andre Standa. Today we remember you. And we say, in the burden of knowledge, now that you know, what would you do? Be an any or lay a mini of our fay and Zuda Kagane may Zaka yin a year up a bango bokai and no fifia in Yanuka and now Wabana and Wabe and then Lele and Jiman singer and Bekune. Lele and Jiman singer Berry has been the African history class. And of course, my brother, my sister, we've been talking about Andre Standa, the criminal police. My brother, my sister, who helped to keep kill many. And who helped to destroy South Africa at the time, brother, my sister? <laughs>